Doctors and researchers tell us that gatherings of more than 10 people is potentially dangerous and can promote the spread of COVID-19. Those who understand the implications of this disease are taking data and turning into, into information so that the general public can make decisions about their health. Because of COVID, I am presenting this talk virtually. I should be standing in a room full of people right now. When it comes to the health of their families, women are the main decision makers. We decide when it's time to seek medical treatment, when it's time to get that vaccine, and how, we're, how we will manage the day-to-day -day for our families. Information is an essential tool for decision making. And we are bombarded with information every day that can, can cause potential missteps that have consequences not only for our own lives, but for the lives of many others. The challenge we're facing today is what information we should pay attention to that shapes our decisions. What knowledge will help us make the best decisions for ourselves, our families, and our communities to stay healthy during this pandemic? There is a constant storm of information and it's overwhelming. Like all of you, I'm exhausted by the sheer amount of information that is available. I often wonder, how concerned should I be right now? And people will ask me, how bad are things really? Well, I work in public health. I'm an informatician and a statistician. And even I wonder what information I should pay attention to, what I should disregard. You know, these questions inspired this talk. Thankfully, we do have ways of answering this, these questions. While the pandemic is a moving target, there are ways we can process information and respond to it. I reached out to an amazing group of women epidemiologists, researchers, and health educators to help me to put together a practical list of tips for managing this COVID information storm. Today, I'm going to present four of those tips to you. The first is to look beyond the headline. Think about how many COVID-related headlines you see every day in the news. Here are just a couple of the sensational examples that I've seen during this pandemic. Coronavirus is a human crisis beyond most of our scariest dreams we will actually need to restart society. And it actually may be the end of the world as we know it. Wow, right? So what do you do when you see a sensational headline like this? Do you immediately repost it to your social media? Or do you read it and evaluate the information to see if the arguments make any sense? Here's an, another fun example of a viral headline that I've seen. How to quit your job, move to paradise, and get paid to change the world. Now that would be great, wouldn't it? But I bet most of us are hesitant to repost that to our social media right away. When you see a headline, look beyond for the substance, or do what I generally do, and just move on. Second, Use multiple data points to make decisions. We are bombarded minute by minute with very specific numbers, like the number of COVID cases. We seem to hang on that particular number and many decisions are made because of it. Just recently, the COVID case count in Fulton County, which includes the city of Atlanta and is actually where we're standing right now, um, was around 30,000. So, but what does that number mean to us without any additional context? You know, it just sounds kind of scary, right? Epidemiologists, those who study disease and track it, tell us that we should look at several, several things together. Not only the number of cases, but also the case positivity rate and the number of deaths. So now what if I told you that the current case positivity rate in Fulton County was around 4% and it was dropping? The point is that we need to take a step back, take a deep breath, 
and look at the bigger picture. One statistic does not make a pandemic. You know, a colleague once told me that the easiest way to be wrong when looking at a statistic is to focus on a small and finite time frame. So the third tip is to question numbers that represent a single point in time. Instead, look for a seven-day rolling average, and that's just the average of the data over seven days. The seven-day rolling average adjusts for when data is not reported or even when it is underreported. And why is this important? Healthcare facilities and health departments often do not publish data on the weekends. So you may see an, a drop in the number of cases and the drop in the number of deaths on a Sunday or a Monday, and then all of a sudden you'll see a spike on Tuesday. What the seven-day rolling average does is it takes that data and evens it out and provides us with a more understandable trend. It brings that more realistic view of those numbers. The final tip is that correlation does not imply causation. Now, I know this one sounds a little less practical, but hang in there with me because this one's really important. Correlation is a mutual relationship or connection between two or more things. And causation goes a step further. Causation means that a change in one thing causes a change in another. We often call causation cause and effect. The point I want you to get is that just because two things are correlated does not mean that one thing causes another. Let me give you a simple example. Did you know that ice cream was connected to shark attacks? Both shark attacks and ice cream sales increase like clockwork every single year. But does a rise in ice cream sales cause an increase in the number of shark attacks? Well, of course the answer is no. Warm weather is actually one of the culprits. More people are at the beach during warm weather, and hey, that's just where the sharks happen to be hanging out. And ice cream is just a fantastic snack on a hot, sunny day. In the face of uncertainty, data turned into actionable information can provide comfort and help us make good decisions. Today, I've given you four practical tips for managing information and decision-making that can be really helpful during this pandemic and can also be helpful in many other situations. Look beyond the headline. Use multiple data points to make decisions. Question numbers that represent a single point in time and correlation does not imply causation. In the midst of taking care of ourselves, and our families, I want to remind you that you should focus on yourself. Women today need to be okay with taking care of ourselves. Take five minutes every day and just exhale. Enjoy that double scoop of cookies and cream, ice cream, without worrying that you just caused a shark attack. We need to make sure that our cup is full before we pour into others. Remember, we are all in this together. Thank you.